Let's talk about how we're going to proceed configuring our compute for the base cluster. In AKS, each node pool will map to a uh, virtual machine scale set or a VMSS. And nodes are VMs in each one of these node pools. Uh, because this can get a little bit confusing, why don't we try to go and draw what we wanted our, our final state here um, to be. So looking at this um, example here, we would have each one of these boxes would represent uh, a virtual machine. And I've taken the, the, the liberty here to just label system and user. So those will be your system nodes and user nodes. Now, as I mentioned um, in the beginning here, what we have is a couple of things happening here. Uh, the system uh, nodes, or again, running on VMs, are part of a VMSS. So this is a virtual machine scale set. And the same applies for these here as well. You can see that throughout the document and the implementation, we will be mentioning um, the different uh, either node pools or sometimes we will reference them back to uh, the virtual machine scale sets. Now, when we look at the system here, the decision we've made for this was to use um, a DS2V2 for both um, of those. So this is also a running a DS2 uh, V2. That's enough for you to, uh, it's enough to accommodate all of the, um, the requirements and um, all of the pods uh, that are part of the cube system. Um, you, you could try to tweak this, but for the architecture that we have, that's, that's what we're going for. Now in the user uh, node pool, it's where you're gonna see uh, a lot of difference here. Now there's a segregation between running um, pods that belong to um, to the system itself. You will find some of them in the in the cube system and space if you if you run kube control against uh, the user nodes. But the user nodes, uh, what we have there is uh, a different size. So we're going for a uh, here is a D S. Now it's larger than the previous one. So we're gonna go for DS4 V2. Uh, then of course this applies for this as well. So this is DS4 V2. Um, and the key here is that you wanna maximize the amount of pods you can schedule on, on the user nodes. Um, so we're, we're looking to minimizing the footprint of the number of nodes that we have uh, at the same time balancing how many pods we can put it in there. So uh, that's, that's, um, that's a, a, a math that, you know, you, it's the, it depends on the workload. Um, for our use case, again, with Hoya for DS for V2, the other thing we took into consideration is that for each one of these user nodes for, so again, for the VMs here, uh, the max amount of pods is 30. So um, if you'd have a, a pod running here, a pod running here, the max amount per VM here for, per node is 30. Um, you can change that number. We, you really need to understand what you're doing when you do that, because that will likely impact performance in unexpected ways. Um, you know, for instance, one of the things that could happen here, you'd have um, issues with either CPU networking storage and whatnot. So uh, that is a math in here. This is not an infinite um, resource that you can just carve out. There are reasons why um, we would go with some of these numbers. So we're, we're leaving these at 30. And the other thing that you have to keep in mind here is for whatever you are um, you were, you're taking this exercise and you're applying to a different situation, you probably want to keep in mind that your workload, so the user workload, will take up to 80% of the resources in any given node. Um, and then 20%, you really want to reserve this for, for AKS and for the services that make up AKS running on that node. So an 80 to 20 ratio here. 
Um, and then the last thing that I want to touch base is that when in this architecture, when we do deploy um, the AKS cluster, this will be deployed into a um, already existing spoke. So the spoke will be there with a VNet, and then we're going to deploy this uh, resources for our AKS cluster in that spoke. It will be a little bit of changes as well in the Azure firewall um, in the regional hub to accommodate outgoing traffic, so egress traffic from these nodes out to the internet. So if you were to just um, zoom out a little bit in here, uh, this entire um, infrastructure that we have here will be sitting on an existing uh, spoke. So you would have a spoke running in here and then uh, traffic going uh, starting from the cluster going outwards would go into um, a VNet peering up to the hub so you have a hub up here and then from there Azure Firewall will take care of the um, ingestion and, and routing of the traffic and of course you do have your web application firewall um, you know load balancer and whatnot in here so uh, that's that's what's happening in in this situation um, two different node pools different sizes um, a node pool will map directly into a vmss and bear in mind the 80 to 20 rule